this video is going to be so hard because I love so many different art supplies. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Arts at Play, and today I am going to be showing you some of my favorite art supplies of 2021. Some of these are old favorites of mine. You've seen me use most of these things on the channel, I'm sure. Some will be old favorites that I've been using for a few years, and some of them are going to be new favorites that I just tried this year. I thought that this would be a good time of year to do this since we're coming into holiday season, and you might be looking for some gifts, either for an artist that you know, or maybe even for yourself. Just a little disclaimer, this video was not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. However, some of these supplies have been sent to me by some of these companies, but this is just an overview of what I like. Okay, so let's get down to it. I'm going to start off with pencils. And one of my, ooh, making noises here, one of my all-time favorite pencils is the Derwent Lightfast. Now this tin is empty because I keep my Derwent Lightfast, well all my colored pencils, in drawers to make it easier to access. However, I do have some of them here and I'm sure many of you have heard of the Derwent Lightfast. I love them not only for the fact that they're Lightfast, but the way they lay down, their coverage is beautiful. I just really, really enjoy working with these pencils. And I've definitely done some of my favorite work over the past couple of years with these pencils. So this is an old favorite of mine. I use them quite often. And yeah, I absolutely love them. Look how pretty they are. And you can tell these are well loved because some of them are shorter than the others. I have definitely used some of these pencils. Staying on the Derwent pencil train, something that I just recently tried for the first time was the Derwent Graffitin. I do have a video of this. I will link all these materials and videos that are related below. I do still have these in their tin. I haven't moved them to my drawers yet. You can tell I used this pencil a lot. But this, these are just so much fun. They are tinted graphite. And so they're graphite with a bit of color and they're also water soluble. So they make these really beautiful muted hues. I just really, really enjoyed working with them. And they made the list because I enjoyed working with them more than I anticipated. But I love them very much. They are the typical Derwent, as you can tell. They look similar. Like they have, they have their telltale markings of a Derwent pencil, the thickness and everything else. And they're just so much fun to work with. I will definitely be doing more with these in the new year. So I hope that you enjoyed watching me work with them in that video where I tested them out because I'm definitely going to be using them more. And I should say this isn't in any particular order of what I like the best. I can't really decide because I work with so many different things. Okay, so another pencil that I really, really enjoyed from this year. The Holbein Artist Colored Pencils. <laughs> I really didn't want to like these pencils because they're so pricey. <laughs> and this is the set that I bought. Again, it's empty because I have put them in the drawers. But Holbein was nice enough to send me some more pencils to try out more after they saw my initial review. And the more I use these pencils, the more that I like them. And they're just so, like, vibrant. They lay down so well. And every piece that I did with them was so quick for me. They're just a little different than regular pencils for some reason. They just lay down in a way that is, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but I do have multiple reviews on these pencils. I'm sure you've heard me talk about it quite a bit. And I really thoroughly enjoyed these. Like I said, when I first bought them, I initially was never going to get these pencils because they were so expensive and they weren't readily available in the US. And then when they came to Blick, I'm like, okay, I have to try them because other artists have been telling me for years to try them. I might as, I, I got to do it. And I did. And yeah, I fell in love with them. And now I'm going to be in trouble because once I start using up these bad boys, I'm going to have to replace them. <laughs> but really, they're kind of in line in the same price range as the, the Derwent Lightfast anyway. So I'm already spending more money on pencils than I probably should. However, I use them. They're well loved. So yes. The Holbein Artist Colored Pencils made my list 
of favorites this year. Not bad for a pencil that I never thought I was going to use. In line with colored pencils and Holbein while we're talking about it. The Holbein Melts Colored Pencil Blender. This stuff is like magic. This is the answer I've been looking for because I want to cut down on using OMS because it's just, even though it's odorless, it's still not good to be breathing in all the time. And oh, I've discovered so many fun things that I can do with this that I can't do with OMS. Like I can pick up colored pencil that I'd colored somewhere else and bring it over and paint it on like watercolor whereas OMS usually stains paper if you do that. I can also simultaneously blend out regular colored pencil and ink tents. OMS won't move ink tents which is good if you don't want it to move ink tents but if for some reason you want to blend colored pencils with ink tents it actually works. I discovered that on my latest fairy piece and so I'm just more and more every time I use this I love it and it is a water-based blender. I don't know how they do this. I think it's witchcraft. I don't really know. I'm just glad they do. And so I will definitely, I've already bought another bottle of this. This is the one that Holbein sent me, but I've bought one on my own because I know I'm going to use it. Really hoping, I don't even know if that's focusing, really hoping that they make a bigger bottle in the future because I will be using this quite often. Okay, so now that we have the pencil pencils out of the way. Another old favorite of mine is the Derwin ink tents. Wow, Derwin is really making my list this year. I didn't realize I had put so many Derwin things in here. So the ink tents blocks and the pencils, of course. I use the ink tents blocks as if they're watercolor pans, so you can see it's kind of messy. These I have kept in here, the pencils I keep with my other pencils. I've been using the Derwin ink tents for years. I bought the full set, I bought the paint, um, the blocks, and then at some point Derwin also sent me a set, which I'm appreciative of because I use them a lot. And every time I use this medium, I love it more and more. I just use this on my recent fairy drawing, which I just spoke about. And I just, I love this medium. Every time I use it, I fall in love even more. And so, it's an old favorite that I've been using for years and it continues to be a favorite in 2021. I just love them. I love the vibrancy. I love the fact that you can combine the detail of pencil with a water soluble aspect. All around a top favorite for me. And of course, look at the artwork by Lisa Clow. I mean, that's just wonderful. So yeah, top favorite probably of all time now. <laughs> if I start doing this annually, this will probably be on my list every year. Okay, so now that we're like starting to get into the paint aspect. These were paints that I've been using for a couple years now and they were instrumental in me creating my Sky series for my senior thesis project in 2020. I, it's another paint that the more I use it, the more I love. I use these for regular painting there's, they're nice and thin. It's the Golden High Flow Acrylics. So they're nice and thin, but they are still opaque. Some of them, obviously. Some are more transparent than others. You're going to get that. And they're light fast. And they're just so versatile. I love using them like I would regular acrylic paint. And they mix well with regular acrylic paint. But I use these primarily for my airbrushing. So if I see they actually have some that are labeled transparent colors so this is what I use when I'm using my airbrush this is the paint I use the most often but again I use it in other applications as well mixed with my soft bodied my other soft body paints or my medium body paints golden is an awesome company I have yet to find a a paint by them that I don't like in some way or another. I'm not a huge fan of heavy body paint to begin with, so that's why I've gotten these. But even their heavy body paint is just so beautiful, even if I'm not patient enough to work with them all the time. But yeah, I have a ton of colors, so I didn't bring them all down to show you. Very versatile, highly recommend. Okay, so something else that I've been getting into in recent years. oil pastels. 
If you've been watching me, you know I've been falling in love with oil pastels. And again, this is empty because I put them in my drawers, but I have kept all these, so I've been able to show you what their packaging actually looks like. My favorite oil pastels right now are the Van Gogh oil pastels. They're just so creamy and they lay down exactly the way I need them to. They have the light fast ratings on them. They have such a variety of colors and these are the pastels that help me fall in love with oil pastels. I am going to be trying some more brands soon. I just, if you watched my recent art haul, I recently got the Neo Pastels by Karen Dosh. I'm going to try those out, but this is my top favorite oil pastel. It checks all the boxes for me as somebody who's new to oil pastels, but is gaining experience. And I have a feeling that I'm always going to love them. So they're by Royal Talons and it's called Van Gogh. And I just love them. As you can tell, I've used these colors a lot. But yeah, I definitely recommend these if you're getting into them. They're really good priced for like an artist. I feel like they're artist quality. So they're they're coming out of the, they're not like beginner quality like Craypaws or Crayola necessarily, but they're not necessarily the most expensive out there either. So it's kind of an in-between price-wise. And I really think that they're a great value for their buck. So yeah, my favorite oil pastels of 2021 and beyond. Okay, so I have another paint that I want to show you. And that is the Holbein watercolors. I used these for the first time this year. I was fortunate enough Holbein had sent me some to try out. So if you saw my video, I put together my own palette where I took these colors and I put them in because I like to use pans. I love these paints. I had so much fun working with them. They're vibrant. They're beautiful. I could tell that a few of the colors were going to granulate really well. I was working on hot press watercolor paper, so the granulation isn't as obvious on hot press watercolor paper, but I really, really enjoyed these. Nice artist quality brand, and I had so much fun with them. I'm looking forward to using them more in the future, so you will see more videos of me using these. Okay, so those are like the main supplies, but I also have some surfaces that I can't do without. The first one that I want to talk about is the Lux Archival Sanded Paper. This was formulated by Aliona Nicholson to use with her brush and pencil powder blender and that whole kit that she has for colored pencil. However, this is what I use for oil pastels. This is like the only paper that I want to use with oil pastels. The colors blend out beautifully. I can layer enough. I'm able to use colored pencil on top because there's enough tooth, but the tooth is even. It's just beautiful. It's archival as it mentions right in the name. It's acid free. It will help your artwork to last a very, very long time. And I just love the products that Aliona Nicholson puts out. I She's an artist and she understands the need for quality. And I'm not affiliated with Aliona in any way. But I can say that her books is what really helped me propel myself into colored pencil. And so I have an appreciation for her and her work and all the hard work she puts into putting products out for fellow artists that will stand the test of time. And so I really love this paper. It tends to be pricey, but it's well worth it. And again, invaluable to me in my oil pastel drawings and paintings because I don't know that I would have fallen in love with oil pastel as much as I have if it wasn't for this paper. Okay, so the next paper I wanna talk about is the Fluid 100, the hot press finish. A lot of times I use Arches hot press watercolor paper for my colored pencil pieces. And that's still a top favorite of mine. Absolutely. But lately I have been using this paper and I love it. I used this when I tested out my Holbein colored pencils. It was just beautiful. The, the pencils worked so well on it. I was able to get the layers that I needed, but it still worked up really fast. It's nice and smooth enough that it's not going to cause any issues. I was not fighting the paper. However, I was still able to get the layers I needed. This is the 100% cotton. 
It's beautiful for watercolors as well. I believe this is also what I used when I tested out my Holbein watercolors. And I'm eager to try their cold press. I bought some cold press and I also bought some of their other watercolor paper that's not 100% cotton to try that out as well, both in hot press and cold press. So down the line, you're going to see me using the Fluid 100 more as I'm testing it out and trying it with different mediums. But so far, I really love it for watercolor and colored pencil. Okay, and the last item is the ampersand encaustic board. I am in love with ampersand panels. I have never made that a secret. And um, actually, I've had some panels sent with sent to me over time as payment for doing like allowing them to use my artwork in certain advertisements and things like that. And so I'm not sure if this is one that they sent me or if it's one that I've bought because I have quite a few of their panels and usually whenever I do a Blick order, I order more. But I've been using this encaustic board for everything. I love it for markers, water-based markers, which are usually harder to blend than alcohol-based. Beautiful on this. I love it for acrylics. I've just been trying all kinds of different mediums on it. Right now, I'm actually doing an acrylic piece where I am, it's a commission, and I'm actually using colored pencil on top to create texture because I wanted to see how well this works with mixed media. It's working great for that as well. So I'm very excited. I love this panel. It has been a game changer for me because I've been in search of something that I can use for multiple mediums, obviously. I believe I tried it with casein the first time I tried casein a few years ago. So this has been a favorite for a couple years and it can. I just keep exploring more and more and I love it more and more every time I try it. Okay, so that is my list for the year. There's many, many, many other supplies that I'm in love with. As you know, you if you follow me, you know that I like to try any media I can get my hands on. And I have tried a lot this year. Derwent's an old favorite of mine. Holbein's becoming a new favorite brand of mine. It's all fun. It's all great. So I hope that this helped you learn a little bit about some different mediums and just kind of learn a little bit about me and what I've been liking to use lately. I will link everything in the description. Actually, I should apologize if I lead to any more art supply addictions because I have heard from a lot of people that I tend to be a bad influence in getting people to buy art supplies. I can't help it because I'm addicted to art supplies as well. So anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that maybe you got to see a new supply that you didn't know anything about. But this is what I have been loving this year and I can't wait to see what next year brings. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.